Sounds good. All right, guys. We'll get it. All right, y'all know everything I know now. Phoenix Minerals, the uh, fun well that started off a two-week workover and ended up uh, just shy of six months, correct? It is. It six is. Six months of workover rig time, correct? Correct. Okay. Not the first one I've had to do that. <laughs> they, and I don't doubt that everybody's so frustrated they could scream while you're sitting there working on frustrated. it. Frustrated? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Spending money like drunk sailors in port. <laughs> on top of that, natural gas prices collapsing. Yeah. So it ain't been nobody sent me no flowers yeah. down there in a while on that well. But I talked to Alan yesterday or the day before, and he said that it is still building up the best pressure we've seen since we've done it. That's correct. He says now our pressure is so high that it's fighting the chemical getting to <laughs> the production in the bottom. And the thing is, like, I mean, Harley and Shane, y'all know this, and, you know, our partners don't. Scoop. And, you know, the newer guys that work with us don't. You can engineer and analyze everything, <clears throat> but until you get that oil out of the ground, you have no clue what it's going to do, how it's going to do it, what's the best way to be efficient and what mechanical issues you might have. And, and this is a perfect example. You fix all the problems and then you get the pressures you want, then the pressure's too large to chemically treat it. Well, all the above is true, but just like we originally thought, there's still a lot of reserves left in that reservoir that's been overlooked. So pressure's a good thing and a difficult thing. Uh, absolutely. So uh, you. Can so can you kind of explain that? So now that we're having, uh, so we were pumping chemical between the tubing and the casing, and the chemical is being injected with the production, and the chemical is a foamer to help bring the water out from the bottom of the well bore, so we can get more gas in the well bore. Correct? That's that's exactly right. What the chemical does is it's uh, primarily soap it lightens up the weight of the water. So it goes down as liquid, foams up as Don So does when it's agitated, and then the uh, That's right. Foam the, the velocity the of the gas takes the lighter water and, and throws it up the hole, okay. brings it to the surface. All right. But so your game plan for trying to get it the rest of the way cleaned up, what is our game plan today? We're going to keep doing the same thing we've been doing. Gotcha. Uh, you know, it's kind of like grandma down there being in intensive care. It gets to be a little bit uh, nerve wracking being so patient, but there's no sense of running and getting a tombstone for grandma. If, if you know, just give her a little bit of time, she'll get up <laughs> out of that bed herself and come back to life. So don't pull the plug. I wouldn't pull the plug. But it's awful hard when you're spending money and economics don't look so great with the natural gas prices. But, you know, I've got gas wells today I draw checks off of when you was a kid. Yeah. And uh, and it'll be the same thing there. That well will last a long time. Well, and the Blunt and Smith did the same thing. That was a project that, again, easy project, days in the hole, turned into a nightmare. We bought, you know, all of our competitors out of it, a two-year rework, and that thing has printed money like the U.S. Yep. meant under the Biden administration um, for the last couple of years. <laughs> Can I interrupt you and say one other thing? Not only did we buy our partners out, but they, they were industry partners, and they were so sure of themselves they sold out for a mere bargain. That's right. They actually you know? laughed and thought we were crazy. So, uh, you know, it, it pays to be patient. It pays yeah. to be persistent. And it pays to not take shortcuts. All right. Talking about those two wells, um, the best well we drilled, 
uh, similar formation or same formation. Same exact formation. Same formation. Infrastructure's in place. Again, another one of those deals that you know you don't know uh, until you get into production. But we got the vest into production, produced it for a couple months. We got oil for two or three days. That's right. Initially, and then no oil and all water and no gas. That's correct. And after producing it for two and a half, three months, we determined that the volume of fluid we were getting from the formation and the weight of the water we were getting from the formations was showing us that the water we were getting was not from our oil formation. That, that is correct. And, and what a lot of people do not realize in analyzing the problems you, you have with these whales, you've got to keep like a surgeon in the operating room. You got to keep everything sterile, got to keep everything clean, and you got to look at everything to see what's working and what's not working and analyze it one step at a time. So it gets extremely annoying having similar problems and having to go back and relook. But the blunt whale, when we bought it, had been squeezed hmm. from a lot of those partners. Really? And and they threw a fit at the cost of having to re-squeeze that whale. And remember, we were one of the smaller partners in the whale originally. I think, now that you're saying that, I think we actually paid for the squeeze and deducted it from the industry partners. I think you're 100% right. And, and the reason being, unless you're familiar with it, in the Tuscaloosa, you have water zones that are just either below or above your oil zones that are separated by breaks of shale. And if you put your pressures get too high up down there when you're drilling it or when you're completing it, you'll bust those shell walls down in between those water zones. And so if you get water, everybody that is not familiar with air will instantly just go, well, the reservoir give up. We don't have nothing there. Uh, that's premature. You know, you may have had the water problem due to one of these water sands that broke through the shell barriers. So if you squeeze it, you're able to isolate that shell barrier again in that water zone from your productive zone. So and since then, apparently um, we were correct because now we've seen more oil and gas than we've seen from the first day we produced the well. That, that is correct. Okay. But again, it, it is it is frustrating to you know drill a brand new well and go. You mean to tell me you couldn't get the water separated to start with, and it isn't a matter of that. You know, if you have to deal with your patient when they get sick. Yeah. It, it's kind of like when I had my stroke. They, uh, I had a young lady tell me, don't be embarrassed. Get in here and work hard. She says, anyone that lives to be an older person sooner or later is going to be in rehab. I didn't understand it then, but now all of my friends have been in rehab for either a hip replacement, a knee replacement, uh, something, you know, and uh, and it's the same with these whales. If you're looking for something that's going to produce 30 or 40 years, so what if it took it six or eight more months to get it working? And so what if it took an, an additional 15 or 20 percent to repair the problem? It'd be like building a brand new hotel and not opening it because you're unhappy that the plumber was a moron that, mm -hmm. and installed the plumbing in the building. You know, it happens every day. Yeah. All right. Um, what other wells am I missing? Jerry Thornhill. Jer I did not talk to Justin today, but apparently yesterday it shot up to 750 pounds and they found another leak in our sales line, correct? That is correct. Yeah. They, uh, when you leave a sales line sitting there without gas sales in it, they will corrode, and therefore they're going to find weak pressure points and they'll leak. On the reservoir itself, the engineers calculated everything just perfect, 
and they never had any fudge factor in case there was any debris in addition that came out of the reservoir. The reservoir has been fracked uh -huh. and it's been acidized. That's right. So there is debris, there's moving particles down in that reservoir. Because we never fully recovered our fracked fluid. That, that is correct. So, oh. and, so uh, and again, right here, we had an interest in the well, and the other partners didn't want to pay after the frack didn't just come in 24 hours later. They wanted out of the well. We bought them all out. They were not happy being patient, waiting on it to clean up. So what we determined was when we shut it in and tried to clean the frack up, that the lift uh, the mandrels, mandrels the we lift. put in the well had a restricted ID down once we put them on bottom of the tubing. And uh, so once this debris started coming up through the fluid, it began to choke it back. Gotcha. So as you just said, the pressures is rising again. It basically blew the debris th through it by shutting it in over the weekends and letting it build up. Again, like I used grandma a while ago as an example, it takes time for the patient to get strong enough to help you. Yep. All right. Um, outside of that, we have three funds um, with Evans Energy 2 and Oil Cash Flow. And we'll run through those real quick. The first, fun the first fund is the uh, Sandy B pistol. Mm -hmm. Sandy B pistol, um, and the Jolie Road and Burkswell. Right. Fun. Okay. So can you explain to us where we are on Jolie Road and the Burkswell? Okay. On the Jolie Road, we have put together to do a uh, acid uh, flush. We've already uh, re-entered the well, completed the zone. We've got gas to surface. We have condensate to surface and a limited amount of uh, formation water. But we don't have the volume of commercial production that we want out of that zone because you've got damage to the reservoir itself back when it was drilled. And what the porosity and perm that the cores and the electric logs say exist the reservoir does not reflect producing that. So once we figured out that we do have blockage, we've designed a stimulant to go in there and clean out the uh, blockage. Now, we will do that here in the next few days. And as soon as that's done, it'll take a month or so of producing it to clean it up to see if we're going to live with that rate and if it is, we'll put it in the sales and be happy with it. If it doesn't, then we may go ahead and add an additional zone with that zone. Or if we get water in the stimulation treatment, we may go to just go ahead and add an additional zone and move away from that bottom zone. Okay. But the bottom zone looks real good to me. Because originally the pressure, when you perforated it, uh, almost blew out. That's right. While we were running, uh, while we were getting the wire line out, that's and it right. Shot up to twenty one hundred psi. So you've got the bottom hole pressure. The logs look good. The cores look good, and you're getting oil and condensate production. You're just not getting the volume rate you want. Gotcha. Okay. All right. With the pipeline right away, we're dealing with a uh, public company. Um, they're great to work with, but their attorneys have to do their due diligence. Um, they have to take their time to analyze everything. They've hey. verbally committed. We're supposed to get it over the course of the next couple of days. Then we can move forward with trenching a new pipeline to the main sales line. Um, is all that correct? All that's correct. Without being rude, you're dealing with a Fortune 500 company that has... Uh, government environmental employees uh, that have uh, requirements that they want to make sure get signed off on. 
you got the liability department with the lawyers and the company want to make sure that they're signed off on. And then have you ever seen a set of attorneys that somebody doesn't want to advance his career? Somebody has got to be the last lawyer that signs a letter that says, I approve or disprove this. Mm -hmm. So I know it's aggravating, waiting for thinking we're just not moving forward on it, but it's a slow process dealing with these big corporations like this. In, uh, in the Berks well, we, we cleaned out location, uh, re-leveled the road, re-graveled the road, uh, removed all the previous equipment. There's one last piece of equipment on location uh, that is needing a crane to remove it. That's right. So as soon as the Jolie Road goes into production, we can hop on the Berks. Correct. But uh, the crane's supposed to show up any day over the course of the next couple of days. It is. They uh, What happened, so many companies went out of business when the oil uh, prices crashed four years ago. So you had the infrastructure for an industry that was maintaining about 4,000 rigs running. Now we've got down to about 500 rigs running. So there were a lot of service companies that were the support companies for the drilling industry that went out of business. So now getting a crane you, you know, you, the industry is beginning to pick back up again. So there's 10 people standing in line to get that one crane. We've been in line for quite some time. That's, That's right. right. And it's frustrating. Yeah. And if we hadn't been in business for 40 years, we'd be a lot further behind in that line getting it. So I'm as frustrated as anybody else, but that's that's the right thing to do is sit and be patient to get it. All right. Fun number two. Um, is the Pistol Ridge Field. We replaced a new wellhead on uh, Pistol Ridge Field last week, right? Correct. Okay, got a new wellhead. And I talked with Alan, and he said that um, he is testing everything on a daily basis to see what fails, what passes, um, you know, what pressures are bleeding off, what's the best rotation to keep the wells producing as much as possible at a certain rate um, and we will continue to proceed with the exact same um, you know strategy moving forward correct correct let me express this the reason we ended up with pistol ridge field was the operator filed bankruptcy after he had borrowed 10 million dollars and he went out and done a lot of work in the field. And then once he went into bankruptcy, the regulatory agencies were all upset. There was all kinds of leaks, uh, lines not plumbed properly, hooked up correctly, not having the right uh, ways to maintenance and put chemical and the service, the production facilities. So what we've been doing is we slowly but surely been tearing out the poorly installed uh, equipment and reinstalling it correctly and making sure that the pressures for the uh, equipment comply with what we need for the work we're going to do. And the production that the wells are capable of producing, you could not get with the... Uh, lesser quality equipment that was on it. You know, when you got valves leaking, you can get somebody killed going out there working on those wells. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we, did, we didn't want to touch them wells till we had them in a safe working position. Yeah. Now we do, and we're still gaining. We're doing a well a, a month, roughly, just as soon as we can get a set of well heads generated out of the uh, machine shop then we're as soon as we can deal with the landowners and again the landowners didn't get paid a lot of money that they should have gotten paid by the previous operator went bankruptcy so needless to say they're not just welcoming us 
with open arms. Yeah. You know, they're they're a little bit difficult to deal with. Right. So yeah. that's what creates the, the slow grind dealing with all this. But if you notice, the production is just steady, easing up. I still believe we'll double or triple the production. Sure. Bird Prisk, uh, fun number three, which is the fun we're doing right now. Um, the six wells plus the new drill in Dexter Field. Um, they are running in the well today with uh, production tubing and rods, correct? That is correct. Testing as they're tripping in the hole. It, it is. Well, when you were down the other day and uh, the partner from Minnesota that was with you, you saw all the sand that we washed right. out of the well. <coughs> Again, the previous operators were operating, they were gutting the wells. In essence, they were taking all the income they could get out of it, and they wasn't doing anything for the mm. maintenance and servicing the reservoir yeah, and the, the tubular equipment. So uh, we went in there and cleaned that sand out. I think, again, you'll have double or better production in that well and what it was previously doing. Okay, right. And that's the reason we bought the properties. Immediately following that, we'll be moving to the Barrier Helfrich, correct? Yes, sir. All right, well, um, I think that kind of covers anything. Um, you know, Will, John, Blake, y'all got a question about our current project, what we're doing, no, why then, we do what we do. Not, not bad. Are they uh, Lisa Jones. Lisa Jones. All right. Got everything on the Lisa Jones done, but the retying in the last surface equipment. And the bands are set. That's correct. Are the tanks out there yet? They're not there yet. We purchased them. They're in the. I saw them in the yard. Uh, beginning of last week. I that's right. That's there. right. Again, there you have to have a crane to load those tanks, and you got to have a, a, a crane at the location to unload them when they get there. Okay. You got to have roustabout crews on both ends. You looking at any cranes? <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, we, we, we got just about everything but cranes. And real quick, that 13.6, it's already paid out. I know we were needing some soap sticks because every now and then that thirteen sixteen right at Sandy Hook. Uh huh. Yeah, that first one already paid out, and uh, how's that coming along? It's doing fine. You realize how many years ago, Harley, you came down to see that well? Yeah. And there were trees growing in the tank batteries when we bought it. They. And there was a picture of the. Uh, Cattle guard. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Yeah. I, You're right. I asked you, well, what's that? And he said, they, they told me I couldn't drill this well. Yeah. You're right. You're I right. Build this thing here up yeah, and uh, an it would it would uh, flood out. every, And that thing paid. And then every so often, they'd have to go out and put them soap sticks in there. That's right. That's right. But that, that's been there. a good. And, and we're still producing on that first zone. That, that we said we didn't know it was going to last six weeks or six months. Uh, 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 it just paid uh, out and we still ain't hit that big one yet. It actually later. is producing more this double. year. It doubled. <laughs> You're <laughs> right. Well, again, that young man was in school when I drilled that well. That tells you how long some of these wells last. You know, and you're right, there's virgin zones in that well we've never shot that analyze as productive as they can be. And I was out there with the rig myself when we drilled in them zones. I seen the gas and oil come to surface as we drilled through them. So I know good and well. And we got some soap sticks because we were short on some soap sticks for a little while. That's right. Wasn't it? Yeah. So when when COVID the water went down, were they able to put them in that one? Yeah, hard to believe, but when COVID hit, we didn't get any soap sticks from China. You know, <laughs> ain't that amazing for our oil and gas industry? Oh, almost so. to the day, LaVon, that when we were down there, that was 
Yeah, it was early Nine spring. years ago. Nine years. Mm-hmm. Same up. formation, higher production rates this year than it did nine years ago. Yeah. And same group of partners. And then that Pittman. That's Sandy that's the reason Hook. I was talking to one of our partners today on the pivot. Four hundred. Ain't that been a sweetheart? Because <laughs> it's got back pressure on the formation. <laughs> it's choked back. Boom. And it's, I mean, it don't get no better than that. Well, and and again, the pr- our natural gas prices would make it a whole hell of a lot better. It does. The, the good <laughs> news, hey, we make money two dollars and fifty cents. The original <laughs> operator on that whale just stripped that whale for all he could get out of it. And the, and the equipment just kept sanding up. And, you know, all it took was a little common sense to go, well, look, why don't you hold a little back pressure on it and quit pulling all that sand out of the whale, you know? But they were greedy. They wanted every cubic foot of gas just as quick as they could get it. So they covered the whale up with sand, and all we had to do was we went in there and bought it out, rigged up, cleaned the sand out, and put it on. And we were looking to do 325, 350, and it's blowing over 400 <laughs> and still not plugging up. I agree, I agree without I'm any trouble. Now, if all these other wells could work out just like that one, we, we, <laughs> would we all be happy? Be that, the, the uh, I guarantee. company in America. And so. it's in the field. That's the good news. Oh, it's, it's in a lot of other wells, that same Heck zone. Yeah. That's why we need to drill some stuff down there. Heck yeah. And uh, again, you just needed the economics to get back to a point that it made sense to drill. And, you, and you're seeing it again all over. All right. Well, uh, we all got partners to update, jobs to do. Uh, glad you came to town. Good to see you in our office. Well, it's fun to see you guys. I, I, I'll be happy to see some smiles on your face when some of this stuff is completed. Uh, I'd like a nice dinner out of somebody who says, you know what? <laughs> it paid to be patient. Harley says he's going to take us all to ponchos. <laughs> <laughs> he better do a little bit better than ponchos. Salt grass. I said all right, all right. <laughs> Dog grass, excuse me. I took All this right. to ponchos on the lotto, I guess, but now <laughs> we're going to go somewhere nice. With these well, holes. we're going to get us a big old skate, oh, huh? Oh, yeah. All right, sounds good. All right, guys, we'll get it. All right, y'all know everything I know now. <laughs> <laughs>